What's up and welcome to my beginner's guide to trail makers. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the things I wish I knew my first day building in Sandbox. I have it divided into chapters for quick reference, so feel free to jump straight to the information you're looking for. Let's get started. When I'm building, the tool I use the most is the duplication option. Once a block is spawned, you can copy it or a group of blocks. You can select a group of blocks by dragging the cursor over the blocks or by selecting each block individually using multi-select. To use multi-select, press control while clicking on the block you want to select. With a controller, place your cursor over the block and click the left thumbstick. Now you can copy just the selected blocks. Once you have your blocks selected, you may want to copy them as they are or mirror them to the opposite side of your build. To copy the group, click the copy tab or press Y on controller, and the block or group of blocks will be duplicated. The angle you are viewing the blocks from will determine which direction the blocks copy into. To mirror the group of blocks, you'll need to move the camera to the opposite side of the group and there will need to be at least one block with a connection point to mirror the group from. In build mode, there are a lot of options to help you get things done. The controls tab lists some basic inputs for managing your options while in this mode. Keep in mind this will be different for controller and mouse and keyboard players. On mouse and keys, you'll see this. If you're using a controller on PC or on console, you'll see this. A few controls are set up differently. The undo and transform controls are moved to a scroll wheel for controller inputs. This tab is dynamic and will list different control options based on the situation. If you're new to Trailmakers, keep this tab toggled on. In Trailmakers, you can assign your builds to transform slots to quickly transform from one creation to another. For mouse and keyboard, hold down the R key, then highlight the build you want to assign, then press the number key you want to use to transform to that build. For controller players, when you have a build highlighted, the transform slots automatically pop up. Just press the button on the D-pad with the build highlighted to set it to a hotkey. The top of your HUD has more useful information as well. The league indicator is the league your build will race in when you use it on Race Island. This is the total power cores you've used on a build, then your vehicle's weight, and next is the total number of blocks you've used on your build. Your actual complexity is hidden till it reaches 350. I'm not sure why this is hidden, since lots of blocks have a complexity greater than 1. Hinges and pistons are 5, wheels are 10, and the ski is a whopping 20. These higher values essentially reflect the block's drain on processing resources for its full functionality. Then, there's your total gold and the help tab. The help tab is loaded with very basic and silent instruction videos. You may or may not find answers here. Build mode offers several options to help you bring your ideas to life. From aerodynamics to center of mass calculations, these tools are all here to help you troubleshoot problems and build efficiently. This is your digital wind tunnel in Trailmaker's build mode. You can use the color and motion of the arrows to determine how much drag your design is producing. Bright green means this block is sleek and has very little drag. 
red means the block is producing a lot of drag and slowing you down as much as possible. This is the tool to use when you want to optimize for speed. If you're planning a symmetrical build, this should save you a lot of time. This mode mirrors anything you do from one side to the other. It works when painting and decaling as well, so it'll be useful from start to finish when you're working on a new project. This is very helpful when setting up logic and in the later stages of a build that you've been working on over several sessions. I reference it frequently when I'm troubleshooting a problem. Wait, what is going on? My right strafe is producing reverse thrust. Is something mapped wrong? Ah, two of my reverse thrusters got mapped to my right strafe input. Well, there we go. Problem solved. This basic tool I keep on all the time. It simply focuses the camera on the block you have selected. If you're moving a block too far out of the original position, simply zoom in and out again to recenter it without having to replace the block. These force markers are super helpful. Knowing exactly where your center of mass is relative to your center of lift can save you literally hundreds of test flights in a new plane. Keep in mind, it can only show you the center of forces as the build is in build mode. If you're heavy into some piston and hinge glitching, these force markers won't be accurate. In this particular case, the game is warning me that my center of drag will cause instability. But in reality, it's giving my plane incredible yaw control. Make sure you do your own testing to confirm what the force markers are telling you. Many of the building blocks and trail makers have settings that can be configured. For mouse and keys, use the configure tab when you have the block selected. For controller, press left bumper to bring up the options wheel and select configurator. Different blocks will have unique settings to adjust according to the function of the block. I'll explain a few of the settings and options found in the configurator that can open up a world of new creative possibilities for your builds. The hinge is likely one of the first blocks you had the urge to tinker with. Red and green arrows indicate the direction of motion for each input. If you end up using logic, remember that green is the positive input and red is the negative. You can assign a button to both of these selections. Both can be set to toggle. This will hold down the button for you till you press it again. With it untoggled, the hinge will return to center on its own when you stop pressing the button. Delay sets a delay from when you press the button to when the hinge responds. Duration determines how long the hinge will stay active from the initial input. And pause sets a time till the whole thing repeats. This allows for some basic animations and loads of other things. Speed determines how quickly the hinge moves when it's triggered. Angle determines in degrees how far the hinge moves when it's triggered. 
Max for the small hinge is 90 degrees and the large hinge it's 60. Steering help will automatically slow down the motion of the hinge relative to the speed you are moving. In a car, this helps prevent oversteering at high speed. It can be turned down or all the way off if you need. Strength determines the stiffness of a hinge. This allows for some complex custom suspension and silly aesthetic options. Hold position stops the hinge from returning to center at any point in its radius, leaving it exactly where you left it till you decide to move it again. Propellers and thrusters have a speed setting to adjust their maximum power output. Engines automatically link to every wheel on a build. You can change which wheels are receiving power by configuring the engine. The gimbal thruster is unique. Instead of speed, it has a power slider. Keep the power in the positive for up thrust and to the negative for down thrust. Gimbals only provide thrust on the Y-axis. Even your seat can be configured. It has built-in flight controls that simulate the player using their weight to pitch and roll. The heavier the build, the less effective this will be. It has no direct inputs, but you can toggle control access to any block that does. The start position setting on a piston determines how compressed it will be when it's spawned. The inputs can be toggled and the auto reset can be used to make the piston return to its original position without toggling or mapping the motion. There are many more blocks with settings. What I covered here will hopefully give you what you need to make sense of the rest of it. If not, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I'm reluctant to get into any logic in this guide. I do, however, want to show beginners how to make a basic always-on switch. Since the always-on switch was my gateway to actual logic, it's a great thing to learn early on. The most reliable one is to use an altitude sensor. Set it to its lowest possible depth and connect it to your hinge. Remember, negative for red, positive for green. Unless you're sitting on the bottom of the ocean, this sensor will send a continuous signal to any block it's connected to. Use it to keep the lights on, your wings angled, and about a jillion other things. Organizing your blueprints on PC is a piece of cake. For console players, there is no way to do this. For you, I recommend using the gallery as long-term storage. Come up with keywords so you can search for them by category. Well, that concludes my beginner's guide to trail makers. I know there's a lot I didn't cover, so again, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll see you in the next one, trailmaker. Peace.